Hi folks, how do we get rid of these whisper cuts in a Fusion 3D rest machine operation? Let's show how, and then let's get into the detail, the nitty gritty, the science behind why they occur in the first place. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So first off, here's the answer. To get rid of these cuts, you've got to go into subsequent operation where they're occurring, passes tab, and you've got to increase your radial stock to leave. Why and how much? If you head over to the NYC CNC website, we'll have a card here. You can download this Excel sheet. It's actually the same Excel sheet we use for all of our speeds and feeds calculation, but there's this worksheet here called Fusion Rest Machining. And we lay out the formulas and the detail, and most importantly, the answer that you need. It's important to note there, there's two sections to this. The first half is for the initial cam operation. And that next operation is what we call subsequent operation. So in this case, we need to populate these first three values, tolerance, radial stock, and smoothing. The initial operation though is the first adaptive. In this case, we're using a shear hog to rough out the majority of the material of this gearbox. We go to edit that shear hog operation, passes. We've got a tolerance of one thousandth of an inch. We've got a radial stock to leave of five thousandths of an inch. And we've got a smoothing of one thousandth of an inch. What that means is when Fusion is done machining with this shear hog, our initial operation, the maximum material that could be left is about eight thousandths of an inch. We'll come back to these two guys in a second. Now to solve these whispered cuts, to get rid of these annoying things, what you've got to do is edit that operation. And that next operation is what we call subsequent operation. We've got to input the tolerance that we're choosing. In that case, it's one thousandth of an inch. That tells us that the minimum radial stock to leave in this case that we can use is 0.011, update our radial stock to 0.011, click OK, and they're gone. So what happened? Why do we have to deal with that? I think the best way to show this is to take a look at what happens in this first adaptive operation. When we choose things like tolerance and like stock to leave, we're changing the way Fusion handles the machining of that part. And it's not magic. There's a lot of science, and it's actually pretty cool science that happens. And what it's doing is it's not using, it's really sad, it's not using your solid model to drive these toolpaths. It's actually creating hundreds, if not thousands, or even millions of triangles. I believe it's called a tessellated model or an STL file. And it's using that to drive the toolpath. I've created an example, and shout out to Rob Lockwood for showing us that this is possible in one of his Fast Track webinars. And I've exported two different versions of the exact same toolpath, with the exception of that the first one, I have a 20 thou tolerance, which is quite large. We're trying to exaggerate it here. And the second one, we have an even larger 0.2 inch tolerance. Now, neither of these are likely ever to be toolpaths you would run, but I've gone into simulation, and if you right click, stock, save stock, that will save an STL file. And what you can then do, bring that back into Fusion. If we look, our 20 thou tolerance, so this is the one that has slightly more precision, looks like this. But if we toggle over to the 0.2 stock, you can see how much rougher or more crude that solid model is. So that gives you a visual representation of what I mean by here, which is the maximum amount of material left. How finely does Fusion need to slice and dice that solid model to hug the perfect surfaces and features and contours of your model? These whisper cuts happen for a very good reason. You're driving this toolpath with certain requirements, and when Fusion looks at what was machined previously, it may look at this facet here and say, nope, we've got material to remove there. And that's also why you tend to see these facets occur in a sort of staccato or varied method. So, you know, it's cutting and then it's linking or wrapping, then it's cutting, then linking, then wrapping. As it wraps around that curve, that's exactly why. Go back to our Excel sheet. Two more details that I want to highlight. There's surface triangulation tolerance and contour linearization tolerance. Where do those come from? Well, fun little fact, there's more to, to Fusion 360 cam settings than you have 
in the typical pop-up menu with the five or six passes and linking and tabs at the top of your operation. How do you get to those? If you right click, compare and edit, this is everything. Now this is a pretty unwieldy list to manage. So search is your friend or filter is your friend. If you type in TOL for tolerance, we see we've now got seven tolerance values. Now some of them, like the first one, are the same tolerance that we have access to in the regular menu. But some of these next ones are values we don't have access to. So what we have found, those should be the default, so you shouldn't really have to worry about them. And that's what this formula is. It takes these, sums them up, rounds them, and then we add one thousandth of an inch. We did this because it tends to be the more reliable result. You need to play with some of your settings and nuances and details. You may be able to reduce that by up to one thousandth of an inch and still avoid those whisper cuts. But again, as a foolproof recipe, this is how we have handled it. If you do a lot of rest machining, which is an awesome way to make your parts, you rough out with larger tools that are more efficient at removing material, you may use a subsequent smaller tool like a quarter inch tool, you may then even step down to one eighth inch or smaller tools to machine those progressively smaller features. And you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't want to have to fuss with these settings each time. Make a template. Set these up once. We recommend a master template file. Here's our example. The same part allows us to control our templates and preferences for our Tormach, for our Haas machines, for all the different recipes. But most importantly, let's say we want to change something, let's say in this 3D adaptive. We can come back into our master model. We can go to the setting that we want to change, make that change. Then we can republish that template. Right click, store as template. The reason that's so important is then it lets you keep your templates easily managed, easily up to date, and then when you've got that new part to make, right click, create from template, pick your template. You could have your rest machining version right here, and it's all done. You're talking about doing your full cam in seconds. That is awesome. We did a video back on Fusion Friday 24 in early 2016 showing off our template basics. Click here for a card to that. Otherwise, folks, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next Friday.